Hello, hello, and welcome. This week, we are got a great number two show for you. We're going to talk Deadpool and Wolverine, the Olympics, and the Rolling Stones. All that and more today on the number two show. Hello, everybody. Welcome to this installment of the number two show, the last one in July. What a beautiful muggy day it is here. It's muggy in the stalls. It's muggy outside. And I appreciate everybody being here. All you doo-doo monkeys, all of you dung beetles, all of you shit mongers. Like I said, we're still workshopping the fan base name, but I'll get back to you when I've settled on one. I appreciate you guys being here today. Got a lot of cool stuff to talk about today. Can't wait to hang out with you guys. Hope you, hopefully you're in the chat. Remember, the phone number is 818-532-1420. You can call that later. I'll be taking phone calls in the third segment of today's podcast, so you don't have to call right away. But be ready. And also, you can always go to the Point app, use the drop-down box, hit number two show, and leave me a message. It comes straight to my email. And in the final email message segment, I might read your message and, uh, and uh, talk to you live on the air. So... Feel free to do that. But now we got to start the show for the first segment, my favorite segment, the one that never changes because I love it so much. That's right. It's time for 15 Minutes with Riz. What a beautiful man. Hello, Scott Rizzuto. Uh, hello. <laughs> Scott, Scott seeing his... Riz is seeing his infographic that we designed for the first time. <laughs> Where'd you get that picture? I don't even know where we uh, scored that picture from, but it's very funny. My face through the glory hole. Nice. That's right. We got you popping up through the glory hole. Hey, it's, hey we spare no expense, man. We appreciate well, you Well, you know, here. I love being here. We do. So, hey, man, I only got you for 15. That's so right. Let's and just, your time has already begun. You're 25 seconds begun. in. Put me on the clock. Something I want to talk about. We talked about it a little off air, and we got to be a little careful with spoilers. But, uh, well, is there anything on your mind today before I get started? Me? Yeah. Because uh, I got stuff I want to talk it's about. It's hot. It's humid. It's swampy. It's miserable outside. Okay. Um, no, I, I mean, I'm good. I kind of left everything out on the number one show. Yep. It's so, hot. It's swampy, and you're going to a Red Hot Chili Peppers concert tonight. tonight. going to sweat your ass off. Should I wear shorts? I'm not a shorts in public kind of guy. Me neither, man. I'd rather have I'd jeans that weigh 1,000 pounds and wear shorts in yeah, a public Yeah, I think set. I may go mud butt. Mm -hmm. I think I may mud butt it tonight Because you're Chili Peppers. You're going to sweat in shorts anyway. Well, we're going with uh, another couple. Uh, we're probably going to hit some dinner before uh, and then head over to the Chili Peppers. So we're not going to be there until about 8.30. Oh, okay. Eight, maybe 8 15 8 30 you're coming in late ah uh, yeah to go out to dinner with another couple wearing and you're wearing shorts yeah that's a no it's go, weird man. that's no bueno brother you can't do that you do that in the in the i'm assuming this is a is this a hetero couple yes it is yes yeah another guy's gonna see that and he's gonna say i can't hang out with this guy he wore yeah. shorts to the chop house yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't anybody, I don't, I don't need anybody to see my knees. You're right. I'm with you. You got to wear pants, man. Just uh, maybe get one of them cool, uh, one of them cool, uh, you know, those handkerchiefs that you can soak. It'll keep you cool or something like yeah, that. Yeah, it'll be, it'll be fine. I'll be rocking out. And I'm taking tomorrow off. There you go. That's right. He's having the day off tomorrow. I will not. I may go to the concert, but I will be in the number one well, show chair tomorrow. Here's. Can I just tell you something? If I if I go to a show, I don't do anything during the week ever you because don't. of my hours. I never ever do anything during the week. You don't, and you hold down the fort quite a bit when the rest of us are gone. Yeah, I mean my alarm my alarm goes off at two thirty, uh, and I I need to function, yeah. and I, I walk in the office around three thirty, and um, I don't do anything during the week. If I go, I really I love the Chili Peppers, one of my you know top ten favorite bands of all time. And they're getting to be one of these bands. Who knows? Could be the last time around. I don't know. These guys are in their 60s. They're getting up there, dude. I want to go to a show during the week if I have to and not have to look at my watch and go, all right, I'm down to five hours of rest. Yep. Three hours of rest. Okay, I might as well just stay up. That's why I'm taking tomorrow off. You've earned it, brother. Well, thanks, man. You've earned it. Uh, well, and have I fun. have the days off. Yes, he has the days off, and he deserves it. He holds down the fort. The rest of us, I travel a lot for comedy. Uh, Moon travels a lot for music. You are you are a boots-on-the-ground boss, and I've always appreciated that about Gotta you. Gotta be, man. But tomorrow, enjoy yourself. Well, now, I will. Today, I want to talk about something we both experienced over the weekend. Uh, 
Maybe you guys have heard of this little indie film that came out called Deadpool and Wolverine. Uh, it set a record for the biggest box office opening for an R-rated movie. I think it grossed like $205 million. And Sixth highest grossing opening of all time. Yeah, eighth in America, and it made four hundred thirty-eight million globally in its first weekend. And I think it it unseated the original Deadpool as the highest opening ever for an R-rated movie, mm. it, which previous record was like one hundred thirty-three million. It crushed the old yeah. record. We both saw the movie. Uh, I wanted to share our thoughts now that we've both seen it. it. It you know it's popular. It's in the lexicon. Everybody's seeing it. People have. Uh, it's getting great reviews on Rotten Tomatoes. It's getting great reviews by fans. Uh, I wanted to hear. Let's talk about our thoughts. I was listen with the with the amount of hype around this thing. I was initially, oh, uh, this is going to be overhyped. It's going to be garbage. Uh, but man, I was pretty surprised and pretty satisfied with it. Yeah, I thought it was pretty. Uh, I thought it was great. I went and saw it a second time with Tina. My that's my- how much you liked it. Well, she wanted to see it, and I was like, I want to support it because Wolverine was my favorite comic growing up. I'm like, I like that they're doing R-rated films for characters that should have R-rated films. Like, you know, you can't have a PG Punisher. It doesn't make sense. The comics weren't like that. So I wanted to go and support it. And also, once I got over, my initial review, and I'll repeat it here, was B plus, A minus, only because I thought that it was just a fun Fan service, a lot of cameos, a lot of nostalgia. Uh, didn't have a big uh, emotional storyline, a big impact. It had a little bit of one, but as far as the MCU universe goes, not a huge impact. Now, I went and saw it a second time. Uh, the first time I saw it, Thursday, 4 o'clock. Only a few people in the theater, a few nerds. Go see it on Friday night. It's sold out. Ooh, yeah, Lots of nerds. They're clapping. People are cheering. And I'm like, oh, this movie's having the effect it intended. And that made me bump it up to a flat A. Now, what do you? So the Rotten Tomatoes on it. Critics give it a seventy-eight percent. So that's crit. So of if there's a hundred critics out there, seventy-eight gave the movie sure. a positive review. What do you think the audience score is? So people have gone to RottenTomatoes.com and said, "I like this movie." How many? What's the percentage? Without looking, I'd say ninety-eight. Yeah, you're close. It's nine. It's ninety-seven percent. 97% dude. And you know when comic book nerds hate something, they love to let you know. Oh yeah. They hate something. Yeah. As you know, the other big announcement was Robert Downey Jr. playing Dr. Doom. It's real split on that. I've seen real split on that. Nerds are split on it. Uh but I will say Deadpool Wolverine tells it felt like a Deadpool Wolverine comic if you read it. It was fun, it was playful. Uh it was filthy, you know. Oh yeah. I I saw my 15-year-old son yeah, how was uh, that? Well, he saw it first on Thursday night. He he had he had bought tickets with his buddy, right? You know, they put these uh, tickets up for sale months before the movie comes out because they know it's going to be popular. Right. He bought the tickets first day. He saw it. I think the the movie let out at eight thirty, just as I was going to bed on Thursday night. I texted him. I go, "Hey, what'd you think of the movie?" He goes, "Favorite Marvel movie of all time." Dad, do you want to go tomorrow? How could I say no to my son? We're getting to the point, Rafe, where... Not going to be know, a lot of those left. Not going to be a lot of... My, my son still wants to do stuff with me. Yeah, you got to take advantage while you can. I said, son, yes, I will go with you. But there were a lot of pegging jokes in the movie. There to were... Sitting there with your son and wife, I'm sure, at times was a little bit... Probably gave you the old creepy crawlies. Well, so my son was sandwiched between us, and mm-hmm. after the movie, as we are walking out, uh, my wife turned to me and she said, do you think he got a lot of those jokes? And I said, I don't want to think about it. Maybe he did. Maybe someone, maybe most went over. I said, I don't know. Yeah, and that's okay. I saw a lot of people. That was one of the things that was weird to me online. I saw a lot of people on TikTok being like, uh, you know, do not see this movie. It is of the devil. It is not appropriate <laughs> to take your children to see. It has blasphemy in it. And I was like. I mean, I don't feel like they were hiding it out of the gate that this, if you've seen the other Deadpool movies, you had to know there was going to be a little bit of yes. filthy jokes. There's it's gonna be raunchy. Some, it's raunchy. There's going to be some sexual innuendo. It seemed like the thing people were mad about, and I don't think this is a spoiler, uh, is that he, re- he referred to himself as Marvel Jesus. Yeah. And that really, of all the things in the movie that are, I would not want to sit through yeah. with a kid. 
That wasn't even in that's my top the 10. tamest. I mean, I think they said the uh, the F word over a hundred times. I think it was counted as over a hundred times for the F word. Um, yeah. Would you rather, as a father, sit through two hours of raunch like that, or five minutes of bare boobies? Definitely raunch. Raunch, right? Raunch yeah, yeah. wins all day. I'll take referential, you know, cocaine references and things like that over. Oh, 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 over actually having to watch like I remember like watching Roadhouse with my dad and there's a scene where a girl's getting it doggy style in the back room and her boobs are bouncing and the guy goes I'm gonna make you my Saturday night thing baby and I just remember my dad was not easily ruffled but I remember I could see his toes curling inside his boots because I was very young and I could just tell he was like uh, please don't ask me a question about okay that. so I had that me. with my 70 year old aunt took me to see coming to america <laughs> oh no in the theater when did that movie come out oh man 88 i'm that's a guess okay so i'm 10 years old okay she takes me to see coming to america okay in the theater <laughs> remember the royal penis is clean yes and the topless maids come out of the water i do that was awkward i'll bet. never forget it I'm never tear forget you apart and your friend too that was in the preview. She should have known better. She should have known better. Well, she learned a lesson. We all learned a lesson. I thought it was cute. Uh, Ryan Reynolds and Hugh Jackman have leaned in. They've done hot ones. They recreated the the picture of... Um, can you pull this up real quick? Over my There we go. Look at that beautiful, cute little picture of the from the X-Men cartoon where Wolverine's staring at a picture of Jean Grey, but now it's just a picture of him staring at a picture saying number one movie in the world. Right. Um, it was really, really... I thought it was good. I wanted to talk about it. I thought it was a, a, a good movie. Go see it. I was in the theater, so it was Friday at 4 o'clock. Place was packed. Yeah. And there were people standing up and clapping. Uh, when There was a particular ca – and I got into it, too. There was a particular cameo in the movie, which I was not expecting. Yeah. And this person came on screen, and I yelled this person's name out loud. Yeah. Like, I got caught up in the moment, and I was excited. You nerded out. I nerded out, and I'm okay with it. Yeah. There were times when I went and saw it with Tina, because I had seen it before, I would lean over before moments and call the nerd out. I'd be like, be prepared for applause right here. And then it would happen, and they'd be like, oh, my God! Okay, I will tell you that the other mo – so that was kind of like a, a, a real nerd out moment in the theater for me. The last time that happened was in Rogue One – Okay. The Star Wars movie where uh, the Darth Vader at the end. Right. I that was, that was, I think, the last time I really nerded out. Like, holy shit, it's Darth Vader. Yeah. In yeah. Rogue One, it's, you know, what year was that? 2015? It's been a while. One cameo that I can, it's out all everywhere. I saw it everywhere on Twitter and everything. The nerd, they, have re, they have not hit it very well. Was That was cool. Was uh, We got a quick cameo of an alternate universe with Henry Cavill. As Wolverine. And I thought... Uh, oh, what they call him? Cav Cavalrine? Cavalrine, yeah. We got to see that. The, the, the rumors... They even referenced it. Because I think they, he was seen on set way long time ago. And it was referenced in the movie. He goes, so the rumors are true. And uh, it was pretty cool. He looked pretty cool as Wolverine. He looked a little too big to me, though. Well, I mean, he's Superman. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, a lot of people have advocated for him to be huge replacement. Sorry if you're watching this, you haven't seen the movie, and you haven't been online lately. But it's every, pictures of him. Yeah, but you know what though, it, it pops up in a place you wouldn't expect, so it's still it's still a surprise. Yeah, it's very cool. Uh, I was waiting for the Taylor Swift cameo. Yeah, it didn't happen. That never happened. Well, I don't want to say we probably shouldn't say what did or didn't happen. I guess for being good boys. Well, they had been saying it didn't happen, so right. it's not really a surprise. But I thought so, I thought it was one of those red herrings, like yeah, we're gonna say it didn't happen, but it really happened. Yeah, there was some voiceover work. But anyway, go see the movie. And that's the end of a segment I like to call 15 Minutes with Riz because I heard the door slam, which indicates to me that he left at some point during that sentence. And that's how we roll on 15 Minutes with Riz. Now, I'd like to take a quick pause for a break from our sponsors, and we'll come back with another segment here shortly. Today's sponsor, Herpes. It's not as bad as you think. And we're back. I hope you enjoyed that word from our very special 
Sponsors, I appreciate you guys being here today. Again, the phone number to call in here shortly is 818-532-1420. We'll flash that up on the screen magically down here. Look at that. I'm a magic man right over my little diaper changing desk. Call in 818-532-1420. If you, you know, maybe you got uh, no spoilers about the Deadpool Wolverine, because I know I talked about it. Don't be calling in saying some bullshit over and getting me yelled at by a bunch of nerds. Uh, or you can send a message on the Point app, or you can message me in the chat. I'll try to scroll through it if I can, if you leave me a message that we need to talk about. Um, but right now, I want to do a segment. I went to a Rolling Stones concert last week, and I didn't get to it. Uh, I went down to Thunder Ridge Arena, down in Branson, Missouri. About the only reason I would ever go to Branson, Missouri, and saw the Rolling Stones for the first time in my life. And I want to talk about it in a segment I like to call... The Annals of History. From the Annals of History. Okay. Couldn't hear if that if that had audio or not, but I, I think you're saying it wrong. But uh, anyway, let's talk about the Rolling Stones. Guys, I went down to Thunder Ridge Amphitheater, which was a, a, an experience in and of itself. I don't know if anyone's been down there. That might be something good to talk about on the phone call. Because I went down to Branson, Missouri. The guy's name is Johnny Morris. Johnny Morris is the owner of Bass Pro Shops, okay? He started selling uh, he started selling uh, spinner baits and rubber worms out of the back of his dad's liquor store, and 30 years later, the guy's worth $10 billion. That's right, B billion, not million, B billion. He bought Cabela's. This guy is loaded, and whether you love him or hate him, he's a big-time conservationist, all right? So we went down to this. Top of the Rock place. I was hanging out. I was going to see the Rolling Stones. Apparently, this Johnny Morris fella, he takes uh, one of the stones. I think maybe Ronnie Wood or his bassist. I don't know. I heard several different rumors. But the basic rumor is this. He takes some deep sea fishing. They nail a sailfish. They catch the biggest fish of their life. They say, Johnny, this is the greatest day of my life. If you ever need a favor from the Rolling Stones, you just ask. And Johnny asked because usually the Stones play eighty to 100,000 seat arenas and thunder ridge is like twenty thousand people okay it's down uh it's down south of branson and he said this is what i want rolling stones i want you to be the final stop make us the final stop on your u.s tour i want you to come down to branson missouri bring your satanic music down here to the christian entertainment capital of the world and i want mick jagger to sway his 85 year old geriatric hip dysplasia hips all over the place and make a bunch of octogenarian panties melt right off. And the stones accommodated, my friends. So I went down there and spent the weekend. We had a good time. Did a lot of cool stuff. We took a golf cart tour of uh, uh, with this, his whole conservation property. This guy's got a lot of money, okay? Uh, he has so much money that he has a nine-hole par three golf course called Top of the Rock. It's beautiful. You're up on top of a mountain. You're hitting off of ridges. You're... You're hitting like 150 feet down, and it's beautiful. All these red rock canyons, and three of the holes sunk in because of a sinkhole. That would have shut most golf courses down, but no, <laughs> not Johnny Morris, my friends. He's like, oh, there's a sinkhole. Well, I'll spend another $10 million of my own money and dig that sinkhole out. And what did Johnny find? Lost caverns filled with dinosaur fossils and Indian artifacts, Native American artifacts, excuse me, uh, and... Uh, the guy's got a Native American museum. It's one of the nicest things I've ever been in. Now, the irony's not lost on me that this guy's very white, okay? He's one of the whitest guys I've ever seen. Let's pull up a picture of Johnny Morris just to show you. Here's what Johnny Morris, best pro shop. He's a cool dude, you know. Let's pull up old Johnny here. Can we get a... There he is. He just looks like a guy that would sh pretty much meet your grandpa up to Cracker Barrel. You know, probably get the potato hash brown casserole and, uh, you know, complain about uh, neighbor kids stealing gas out of his garage. But, hey, here he is. He's a $10 billion man. But he seems like a man of modest means. But he's clearly not a Native American. I, I mean, I didn't run his blood, but I'm going to go ahead and say he's not one. But he had one of the nicest Native American uh, museums I've ever seen. And, and my, my gal and I went to a sunset dinner up at Top of the Rock. And we went to the, it was in the wine cellar. And it was nice. 
Okay, it was a four-course meal. I sprung for something nice. It was a little vacation for us. And there's a restaurant above us called uh, uh, the Buffalo Bar, and they'd shut the whole Buffalo Bar down. All right? So we're down having this four-course dinner. We're hanging out. And uh, there's a guy down there that looks like he probably sells timeshares or some sort of mortgage advisor. We thought he was with his daughter. It turned out to be his date. She was easily 35, 40-plus years younger than him. Uh, he was upset because he got his uh, he got his reservation canceled at the bar upstairs. Like, they shut the whole bar down because guess who's coming to dinner? The Rolling Fucking Stones. But this guy wasn't happy because he wanted to fondle his young date. So he's sitting here at this dinner. We're all having a good time, and he's just being a jerk to the waiter. He's groping and kissing on this young girl at a family style table across from like three aunts who were there on vacation three like elderly aunts who were clearly there to see the rolling stones they weren't having it they were like sir you're disgusting could you please stop he got upset he goes to the waiter he's yelling at the waiter i assume because they didn't have dino nuggets for his date uh, or maybe she had to be home by eight o'clock you know i don't know what was going on but the guy stormed out, which was, I thought, well, this is the best show I'm going to get right here. We're, we're starting we're starting a gossip train on this guy, me and our table. We had a cool table. But then we go outside to watch uh, the sunset, and they have what they call a Native American uh, tradition of shooting a cannon and playing the bagpipes. Because we all remember how the Lakota Sioux and the Apache and Comanche all had bagpipes in all of all the movies we've ever seen about Native American culture. They're just out there wailing away on them bagpipes. But it was cool. But during the ceremony, what do I see? All my cell, all the cell phones start turning around, and they're shooting up the deck above us. And guess who's up there? Mick Jagger and Keith Richards are just standing there 20 fucking feet from me, dude. I'm about to lose it. Keith Richards immediately notices he's being filmed and just disappeared like Rumpelstiltskin. Nothing was left over. Only thing left was a bottle of Jim Beam and a half-burnt cigarette just sitting there where he used to be. It was magic. And then Mick Jagger realized he was being filmed and slowly disappeared into the shrubs like uh, that Homer Simpson meme. But it was kind of cool to see Mick Jagger. It, it was weird to see him outside of being a rock star before the show. It was like seeing a magician before they saw the person in half, you know, like... He had on a pink shirt, and he was holding a doggy bag full of food. So to see the biggest rock star in the world just holding a little plastic bag with, like, two to-go containers in it was kind of messed up my head, to be honest with you. I was just like, what the hell's going on up there? Is Mick Jagger just like me? Does he go home and stress eat in the hotel room bed after he's done his shows? Probably. He's a performer. I'm a performer. Me and Mick. Mick and Rafe. Look at us. We're the same. Made me happy. But anyway, we tried to sneak up there, got escorted out by security, which they had plenty of. They had an entire shuttle bus full of security. If you're ever wondering if you could get close to the Rolling Stones, the answer to that question is fuck no. Uh, there were a lot of big dudes uh, between Mick and me. I tried to get off the elevator, play it cool. They didn't play cool with me at all. They put me back on the elevator very quickly. But fast forward, we go to the concert. We see the Stones. It was a great experience. I'll give it an A+. Plus. It was worth it. I bought good seats. I was close to the stage. I spent a little bit of money that I didn't have. And uh, I got to tell you guys, they all, everyone's always like, uh, you know, the Stones, <laughs> they're still young. They're still out there rocking it. And I'm here to tell you, that ain't true. Uh, they're up there. I'll give you this. I saw the Rolling Stones. And let me tell you something. Mick Jagger is carrying that band on his back because he still moves around quite a bit. I will say that. Um, Uh-oh, I'm missing a file here. Let's see if I can... I guess that's... I'm just going to get what I get here. Hmm. All right, I'm going to play this video of Mick Jagger and the young lady he was singing with. And, uh, oh, you got something for me? Yeah, I think you need to close out of the Bob the Cap Catchers tab. I think it's playing sound for us. Oh, let me get out of there. Hold on a second. Daddy's running the show by himself over here. And I have to turn off the Bob the Cap Catcher because it's been playing on repeat quietly the entire time we've been sitting here. So let's get out of that. 
Let me shrink out of this, and I'm going to play you guys a little bit. This is stuff I recorded on my phone. Are these the only two files that we have? Uh, I believe so. Okay. Well, a couple of them are missing, but we'll do our best we can with what we got. Here we go. This is my boy. I wonder if there's a way to let me make this big. There we go. Here's my boy, Mick Jagger, doing it up. Let's watch it together. <laughs> You can put a whole screen on this if you want. Woo! Now I kept the camera on her because that is my new queen, people. Let me tell you something. That's the next Beyonce. Holy smoke, she was cracking it. And it was really cool. And uh, Mick's still doing it, man. Like, he looks all right. You know, he's still in good shape. It seems like Mick works out. I mean, he's old. He's 81 years old. Don't get me wrong. But they put a Fitbit on on, on Mick. And, uh, you know, he looked like, I think they said he walked like 5.7 miles during a performance or something like that. Mick's doing it. Mick is carrying that man on her back. Because I can tell you, Ronnie Wood and Keith Richards did move around, but they moved around like uh, the animatronic animals at Showbiz Pizza. You know what I mean? It seemed like they were being slowly puppeteered. Uh, now granted, they have instruments, and that's fine, but it seemed like uh, they were uh, they were certainly having uh, mobility issues. Let's just say, you know, they had orthopedic shoes on. I was close enough to see. They had them painted like they were boots, but those were New Balance 571 orthopedic issue on both of their feet. I don't even think Keith 100% knew where he was. Keith, honestly, honestly, Keith Richards could be dead and had been just reanimated by Pixar's team so the Stones can keep touring. There might have been an entire Jim Henson crew running, running Keith up there, for all I know. It's very well possible because I've got like a little, uh, and we can throw this up. Here's a picture I took. Look at those guys. Those, now they say they're aging well. I say they're just aging. Cool guys. But if you think about it, let's go, you know, right to left. Uh, they do look like your three unmarried aunts that come over to visit every Christmas, right? Well, on the right here, we have, uh, you know, put a picture in picture so we can see, uh, you know, there we go. So now, right over here, we got here. How are we doing this? Right over here, we got our three unmarried aunts. Okay, we've got we've got the aunt on the on the right as you are looking at the photo, which is Keith. Kind of looks like the aunt that definitely runs a cat shelter, right? Definitely runs a cat shelter. Very much always wants to read your palm. Every time she comes over, she's got to tell you, uh, you know, she's probably every Christmas you get a dream catcher from her. And that's OK. There's nothing wrong with that. And then we've got our aunt in the middle in her homemade unicorn shirt, as you can see. Now, she has an Etsy store where she sells these shirts. She's never sold one. She hasn't sold one, but it's not important. It gives her something to do. She really loves arts and crafts. You loved going to her house as a kid because, uh, you know, your, your Aunt Ronnie, she's going to have you out there doing macaroni art. You're going to be doing all sorts of fun stuff. Uh, always has fresh Play-Doh. Always going to be making something cool. Bought all the screen printing equipment to make her own homemade unicorn shirts. Hasn't sold one yet, but she wears them all around town. She, t she hands out business cards at Applebee's. She's great. She's fun to be around. Now, she goes out in the sun too much. She's kind of got that leathery look. She never has put on sunblock in her whole life. And that's okay. That's who she is. She likes going to the beach and she likes making her crafts and there's nothing wrong with that. And then we've got our cool Aunt Mickey, right? Now, Aunt Mickey, she's still kind of a little, she still goes out. She still goes out to the VFW and she dances around with the boys. She's not afraid. You know what I mean? She's the town bicycle and she's proud of it. She doesn't care. Aunt Mickey, and she always gives you a Kit Kat. Always has a Kit Kat in her pocket. Doesn't care if it's before dinner. Oh, Aunt Mickey's going to hook you up. And they're beautiful people. And uh, I just wouldn't say that they're not aging. I don't think that would be accurate. But all in all, they put on a hell of a show, played all the hits, really enjoyed ourselves. And yeah, do they look like a Golden Girls reboot? As someone said in the chat, 100%. It does look like they're three-fourths of the way to a Golden Girls reboot. Um, and that's okay. 
They're still cool guys. They're still out there doing it. I got to say greatest rock band of all time. No one can, the catalog plus the longevity, uh, you can't fuck with them. You can't really come at me with anybody else because they played the hits and there was plenty of them. They didn't play a lot of their hits and they still were pretty much wall to wall one of the best I've ever seen. So that is my rundown of the Rolling Stone show. And, uh, you know, the Branson area was nice. I hadn't been there. I had a good time going to all those museums and stuff like that. Uh, so I don't know if you're thinking about a trip to Branson, I would have another reason to go a concert or something like that, because I didn't actually go into Branson. It did not seem appealing to me, but the Thunder Ridge area and the Thunder Ridge arena was great, except for parking. They're never going to figure out parking at any big concert venue. Don't even try. Uh, phone number 818-532-1420. Give me a call for our next segment. Uh, if you want to chat, maybe you got something that uh, relates to something we've been talking about today, or maybe you just need advice on something that's going on in your life. As long as it's interesting, don't call and ask me what my favorite barbecue sauce is. I've answered that about 3,000 times. But call in, and we'll chat after a word from our sponsors. Remember, today's sponsor is Herpes. It's not as bad as it sounds. Okay, and we are back, baby. And I appreciate you guys hanging out. We've had some fun today already talking to Riz about Deadpool and Wolverine as well as the Olympics and uh, getting into breaking down the Rolling Stones and what a concert's like from them. And it was really, really great. And now we're going to get into a little segment of fan mail and emails and messages and comments and phone calls live on the air that I like to call Tank Talk. It's Tank Talk, so call me on Tank Talk at 818-532-1420. That's 818-532-1420, and you can win two tickets to the next live number two show where you can watch on your YouTube just like you're doing right now. That's right. I'm giving away two free tickets to be at home. Log on to your YouTube that you pay for and watch me live just like you're doing right now. 818-532-1420. Give me a call. In the meantime... And this is great because she's in the chat. I will read an email that I got today. Hey, Rafe. I love the addition of you and Learn on the number one show, The Rizzuto Show. Thank you very much on my behalf and on the behalf of my very good friend, very sweet soul, Learn Elwell. And have been enjoying the shit out of the number two show. See what I did there? Very nice. I love a pun. I'm glad you're enjoying the number two show. She goes on to say, you mentioned often that you would be into threesomes and such. And I was wondering if you and Tina would be really interested in making that happen. Asking for myself and I'm sure quite a few others. P.S. Please don't use my last name if you read this on the show. Sent by full name, Jenna. Just kidding. I'm not going to say her full name. Uh, thank you, Jenna. That's very sweet. Uh, I think Tina was in the chat. We'll, we'll see what, how she weighs in on this. Uh, a lot of ha 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 ha's coming from Tina in the chat. Um, this is a very sweet email. We do talk about it. Like Tina and I have had very open conversations. I would say we're pretty sexually progressive people. Uh, you know, it has to be the right circumstances. Um, we don't ever want anyone to feel left out. I don't think. I'm not sure if we could walk into a random threesome or not, but my girlfriend's by curious. She's made that clear in the past in many ways. Um, and, uh, you know, it's never off the table, Jenna. That's all I'm saying. There's always a possibility of a threesome if you're dealing with the Tina and Rafe bilateral union. I don't know uh, what she is going to say, but I will tell you this. If, for some reason... The circumstances were right. We got to know each other. We're friends. You always want to have a friendship first. You know what I mean? Anytime you're going to bring somebody else in to something like that, you got to be able to have fun with the person. You got to have a rapport. Uh, or you got to just go to Vegas and just get a completely random or Amsterdam and just be like, hey, we're going to pay a sex worker to come in and, and do this with us. So it's a business transaction, you know? And I feel like you got to be at those two ends of the spectrum for us, for me. I can't just meet a random person, you know, at a, at a Chili's and just be like, hey, after you're done with that onion ring tower, 
would you like to fuck me and my girlfriend? That is not the type of guy I am. But I'm not turning down an onion ring tower as part of the threesome. I can't eat the onions, but I could wear them. You know, maybe you're into that. I don't know what you're doing at a Chili's on a Thursday afternoon. Maybe you like, maybe you want me to put onion rings on my penis. And, uh, you know, that's part of the fun for you. And I want you to have fun. It is an interesting question, though. You know, I am a comedian and we do joke around a lot. But Tina and I have talked uh, in the past. It's definitely not ruled out of our relationship. Uh, if it ever were come to pass, it's just something you got to have good communication. That's something that we do have in our relationship that I'm very proud of. My partner and I, we talk about these things. We are very open about, and I think a lot of people could benefit from this. There's a lot of uh, people that, and, and I'm not saying everybody, and, and you know, different strokes for different folks. I'll preface it with that. I don't want anyone to feel bad about themselves. But I think a lot of people get married or they get into relationships or they get into these patterns of like uh, denying basic human facts or attractions. Like I always think it's weird when people are like, you better not even look at another person as if when you get married or like that, you can't tell if someone is sexually attractive or if you see somebody and you're like, Oh, Chris Hemsworth is hot. Be like, who? I don't even know who that is. I only see, I only have eyes for you, Reginald. That's bullshit, right? It's the same thing. Like, and Tina and I are very good about uh, just being open and honest about that and not being insecure. Uh, I am not, I have a secure attachment style, I found out, which is one plus. I have all kinds of mental problems, but that isn't one of them. And I think that we, we love each other. We're not looking for that necessarily. That's not something that feels like it's missing in our life, but we're also very honest. We're out in a restaurant and I'm like, hey, check out that girl's jugs. Those are crazy. And she's like, yeah, those are some pretty big, uh, Look at her nipples. They're hard as a rock. And I'm like, hey, you ain't got to tell me, sister. And I think that's good for a relationship. I really do. I think it it takes so much pressure off. And it's and you and you live in a place of truthfulness with each other where it doesn't feel. I honestly think it if you can get there with your partner, it makes jealousy better because you're not having all these secret thoughts or them projecting these secret thoughts onto you. If you can be secure within yourselves and be like, hey, you're my main squeeze and you're, you're the, you know, I don't care. I heard a friend of mine, uh, you know, my friend of mine, Laura, who I love very much, once and her and her husband are like this. And she said, hey, our motto is we don't care where you get your appetite as long as you eat at home. And I think that's a good policy to have. And if you are going to eat out, <laughs> I said, if you are going to eat out, that's why I'll put a rim shot in there after this has gone live. There's going to be like a... If you are going to eat out, it's something you decide together and you go out for a meal together. And if it's something that, uh, you know, or there's other types of open relationships and I'm not shitting on that. Some people have the, the, you know, you go date someone, I'll go date someone. If that's your thing, good for you. That's definitely not our thing. But uh, I think, yes, I did say rim shot. Thank you in the chat for those who got that. That was a double entendre joke, okay? Find another podcast where you're going to get a double down on a joke where I'm already making one sexually crude comment and I double down with a second sexually crude joke to in tandem. You're welcome, America. I do think that, uh, well, Tina's in the chat. She's just putting up a lot of emojis. Uh, Tina, what do you think? Will we take an application from Jenna as a possible uh, threesome uh person i will say we do kind of have a rule which i think is a good rule when you're in the public we tend to be like don't fuck fans not that it's off the table if you become friends but we definitely that is always i think a good rule if you're in the public eye is you know you don't want to take advantage of that that situation um but if we would meet and we would hang out and become friends and it transcended the fan friendship, it would be on the table and I'm sure you're hot. And uh, a lot of times I feel like I'm getting by on people wanting to bang Tina, on girls wanting to bang Tina, which is totally fine. I'm cool. I'm totally fine being the less desirable of the two. As long as I can be in the room, that's really all I care about. You know, I just wanna be in the arena 
while the ball is being played. That's all I care about. I just want to be on the field. You can put me in right field. It's fine. Everybody knows that's where you put the scrub. That's fine. Put me out in right field. As long as I can, you know, participate. That's all. In some way. Even if it's watching the action. Who knows? But I will say, if you're in a relationship, I would highly recommend being communicative and being honest about being attracted to other people. Um, Because if you love each other at the end of the day, who fucking cares, dude? Make it okay for me to think Kate Beckinsale's hot and not me not have to pretend like I don't think that. Or even people you know. I know when we have other hot couples, we have good friends that are hot. We hang out with hot couples all the time. We have tons of hot friends. I'm like, yes, yeah, she's hot, he's hot. That's a husband-wife hot, hot, tot combo. I hope people feel that way about us. You know, and I think it's okay. You don't have to necessarily join a swingers club to acknowledge that you have hot friends or that you're like, hey, you know, perfect set of perfect world. We're all single. I'd bang Trisha. Sure, why not? And you could bang Mark, and it's totally fine. Who cares? Anyway, Jenna, short answer, maybe. All right, do we have some phone calls coming in? Let's see. Oh, well, Tina has finally said, proud to call Rafe's Hemsworth my man. Well, okay, brownie points for you. And she says, let's see those beautiful blue eyes, Rafe. Deborah, here you go. Can we punch in? We don't have that capability. Never mind. Just hit Zoom on your YouTube, I guess, and I'll... There's my beautiful blue eyes. Tina says, Rafe, you're doing a great job explaining all of this and life and love. I'll be adding this every time people ask if we're open. Ha, 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 ha. Well, that's good. Apparently, I explained our position well. Uh, and we are not open, open. I know a lot of, and that's a common thing in comedy, too. There's a lot of comedians that are like, when you're on the road, you're on the road. Am I right? And I'm like, nah, that can get dicey. But the main thing is uh, talk about it. And I think if you talk about it beforehand, like don't, uh, my rule with Tina has always been like, hey, if you find yourself wanting to fuck somebody else or that really comes up and it's got to happen, your hall pass has got to happen. You met the guy or girl is super hot, the celebrity hall pass, just call me before. Just let me be, don't make me a part of it after the fact because that feels like a betrayal of trust and loyalty and I, I value trust and loyalty and I feel the same way. I'm like, hey, if something's going to happen, if something's going to go down, I don't care if you flirt. I don't care because uh, I think that's normal. I think those are normal feelings to have. I think it's fun to flirt. It's also nice to like, when you're in a relationship a long time, it's nice to know people still th think you're attractive. You know, I like getting flirted with. It doesn't mean I want to leave my gal. It just means I'm like, oh, I like if a, if a hot person thinks I'm hot, it makes me feel good. I think that's anybody. We all, nobody wants to age and start feeling like a non-sexual being. It sucks. So uh, I think when you close that off in your relationships, it's a lack of trust or maybe it's insecurity and you're denying people, you know, pleasure of simple pleasures, honest pleasures of like, ah, girl, lady flirted with me at the grocery store and I don't have to feel guilty about it. You know what I mean? Let people have it. And I think if you let them have it, they're less likely to crave it. And they're less likely to cheat. I really do believe that. I think if you let people have a little bit of a leash to play in a harmless way, that they're less likely to go out and, as my friend said, not eat at home. All right, moving on. Let's get to phone calls. Who do we got here? All right, I'm going to take my phone call here. Let's see who we're talking to. Welcome to Tank Talk, you're my first caller. What can I do for you? Who am I talking to? And what in the hell are we talking about? You're talking to Mark from uh, Southern Illinois. Mark from Southern Illinois. How far in Southern Illinois, Mark? I grew up in Steelville. All right. Yeah, I got some pals in Steelville. You're over there in uh, that's Amish country, brother. Uh, yeah. It's Aviston, Amish right? Jason, I'd say. Yeah, it's Amish adjacent uh, for Aviston's sure. Over. Oh, not Aviston. What am I Campbell thinking of? Hill. I'm not thinking of Avis. I said that wrong. You're What's Campbell Hill. Campbell Hill. That's right. I have good friend. My good friend Starla is from Campbell Hill. Love her and her her man Jody. And speaking of couples I'd swing with, there's a couple right there. I ain't afraid to say it. Jody and Starla both know all it right. too. All right. Anyway, sorry. I'm referencing something earlier. Now I'm thinking about all the couples I want to swing with. And my friend, there's a lot of them. But anyway, 
What can I do for you here, Mark? You know, I don't have a whole lot. I'm uh, surprised I got picked here. I was just wondering if you guys were going to continue to challenge the 101 ESPN guys. It hasn't been going well lately. Hmm. Okay. Is that it? Yeah. All right. I'm going to answer it, Mark. Have a great day. It was good talking to you. I'm going to drop the call and answer your question, okay? Thank you. Bye, Mark. Oh, bye, Mark. Oh, bye, Mark. Uh, Mark's question is in reference to, for those of you that do watch the show that don't watch the Rizzuto show, I have to be mindful of my YouTube and listening audience. The show that I'm on during the day is the Rizzuto show. It's a radio show where we challenge the ESPN show to a lot of challenges that uh, are sport-related. We don't do well a lot of the time, but I think that that's, you know, we just had a home run derby this last week, okay? Here's the deal. And I'll tell this story because it, it does kind of line up to something I want to talk about anyway. And I, I wish I had the footage pulled up right now because I would show you. We had a home run derby down at Car Shield Field, a minor league field, where me and all of my uh, associates on the show, five on five, had to take on ESPN's crew. The ESPN 101 crew consists of Kerry Davis, who is an ex-Pittsburgh Steelers Super Bowl champion, Jamie Rivers, who is a former NHL player and enforcer, and though these guys are still in great fucking shape, by the way, Anthony Stalter, former Division I baseball player, Andrew Marsh, also a college baseball player and 23 years old, still in the prime of his goddamn life. Maybe not 23, but he's in his mid-20s. He's a young, hot guy. He looks like Morgan Wallen, but way less racist. Hot guy. And then we took on Brooke uh, Grimsley, who, or I don't know, she just got married, but I believe it's still Brooke Grimsley, who also played college tennis, I believe, and is a sports and in phenomenal shape. Does yoga every day. Everybody. And we barely got edged out. We barely got edged out. You know, we lost by a few home runs, but for the most part, we put up a good fight. Yes, we do. We do lose. They're all very hot, strong people. All right. That's a hot, strong show. ESPN 101. Speaking of, honestly, I'd let any of those people bang Tina. Jamie Rivers, Anthony Stalter, Kerry Davis, Andrew Marsh, and Brooke Grimsley. If you're listening, you can have sex with my partner. Now, I don't mean that uh, in a weird way, since we are co-workers. I'm just saying open invitation. We were talking earlier about who uh, who we find attractive. That entire show is hot as fuck, okay? Every single one of them. And if they wanted to... I haven't met all their wives and husbands, but I'm willing to bet they're hot too. I know a couple of them are. We went to dinner with Jamie Rivers one time, and his wife's so hot that a guy risked his life by zooming in on her tits in the middle of a picture. And we called him out for it. <laughs> and we were like, dude, this guy used to be an enforcer in the NHL, and you just risked it all for a boob pic of his wife. He zoomed in. He was like taking a picture of a group, and we saw his fingers going like this. And we're like, I think he's zooming in on, uh, on her boobies, and he damn sure was. And I got to say, I respect the guy for risking it all. He risked his life. Jamie Rivers is a good soul. He laughed about it. But I wouldn't try it if I were you. I'm not advocating for this in public. Anyway, they're a hot, strong show. We did okay. And you know what? These are athletic challenges. We're all in our 40s, save our Learn, who's hanging on by a thread. She's 39 years old. She's one of my co-hosts. She's been on the show before. You know, but this home run derby was important to me because full circle. When I was 12 years old, I went to my first Cardinals game, Okay. Growing up in the St. Louis area, big deal. Andy Van Slyke had been traded to the Pittsburgh Pirates. Bonds and Bonilla and Van Slyke were the best outfield in baseball. The Cardinals played the Pirates that night. I believe they lost that night. I was a big Andy Van Slyke fan because he was a St. Louis Cardinal who got traded. I was a little kid. We think like a kid. You're like, oh, my guy I like got traded. I got to like the team he's on now. So I kind of liked both teams, but I was still a Cardinals fan. And there was a Cardinals player named Brian Jordan. For those of you that don't know who Brian Jordan is, this guy's a fucking boss, okay? Besides Deion Sanders, he was a two-sport player. Played for the Atlanta Falcons, St. Louis Cardinals, and later the Atlanta Braves, okay? This guy played professional football and baseball. This guy's a stud, all right? we His parents, in hindsight, we're from Southern Illinois. Maybe it was a little country bumpkin -y. His parents came up. They let us stay uh, at a hotel and they let us walk to the game by ourselves at 12 years old downtown st louis do not recommend that 
Don't do it now. Certainly shouldn't have done it then. I believe downtown was worse then than it is now. But I digress. They did. We were fine. Go to the game. We hang out. We try to get autographs. As Brian Jordan pulls out, real nice, I don't remember, Cadillac Escalade or some cool car. We don't know. Tinted windows. This guy's a star. Two sports star. He's driving the cream of the crop. Whatever 1992's Supreme Edition was, this dude was in it. He didn't sign autographs. He pulled out and we're like, that's Brian Jordan. That's Brian Jordan. Autograph stop. We decided to walk back to the hotel. What do we see parked in a parking lot? Brian Jordan's SUV. We're 12 years old. We're like, that's Brian Jordan, dude. We saw him pull out. We go up to the car. We knock on the window. He rolls down the window. He's talking on a, a, on a bag cell phone. That's how old. That's how long ago this was. He was talking on the Zach Morris bag cell phone. I say... Brian, we're big fans. We wore at the game tonight. Do you think we could get an autograph? And he pulled the phone away from his ear. And he looked at me in my child eyes. And he said, catch me some other time. And he rolled the window up in my face. And he crushed us both. And Brian Jordan was going to be at this home run derby. This Brian Jordan was with the guest hitter because they had pros hit in between us. So Rick Ankiel, Brian Jordan, uh, Pete Cosma, and this this, this guy that's called the King of Juco, who's a huge YouTube star. They're all hitting baseballs in between us. I don't want to fuck up in front of Brian Jordan. I'm already pissed about this, right? I'm like, I'm not going to let him humiliate me twice. So I got a hitting coach. I went to Scott Cooper at All-Star Performance, former Boston, former NL uh, All-Star, okay? He's teaching me how to swing the bat, how to do the uppercut, how to get the hits, all right? Because I last year, I'm going to be honest, I underperformed in this home run derby. I'm in my 40s. I went to the batting cages the day before. I was sore as hell. Every time I tried to take a swing, I hit it. But the next day, when I went to go to the home run derby, it felt like Mike Tyson snuck up behind me and gave me like three uppercuts right into the middle of my back. I could barely swing the bat. I didn't do well last year. I think I hit 10 or 11 home runs. I felt like a big underperformance. This year, they moved us back to home plate. The fence is 50 feet further, so it's even more challenging. Now I go. I arrive at the ballpark. I'm like, look, I'm going to see Brian Jordan. I got a beef with him. I made it clear on the air that I was going to clear the air between us. I walk in to the clubhouse. Who's the first person that greets me? Brian fucking Jordan, dude. He says, Rafe Williams, brother. Is that you? I've been looking for you, man. It turns out somebody from the Cardinals sent him the clip of me talking shit. He says, hey, man. You're going to have to catch me another time. I start laughing. He starts up, gives me a hug, apologizes to me, makes a video apology to me for me. Couldn't have been a sweeter guy. Gave me a hug. Said, hey, man, I don't know what was going on that night. I feel terrible. Uh, I must have been 0 for 4. I was probably going through my divorce, man. I can't believe I was rude to you as a kid. I'm so sorry. Couldn't have been a cooler dude. He even sent an apology video to my friend who was with me, Devin, he sent a separate video that I sent to my friend, unannounced, by the way, which blew his fucking mind. Didn't tell him anything. I just sent him the video. Sends nothing. And he goes, what the hell is happening right now? Where are you? And I'm like, don't worry about it, dude. When someone tells me to catch him another time, you best believe I'm going to fucking catch that ass another time. And Brian Jordan was cool. Now, fast forward. Home run derby. I have to go against their best hitter, Marsh. Okay, this is the young guy. Played college baseball. He's still in his prime. He's hitting dingers, right? He hits 13 home runs. No one before him, other than Learn, who broke double digits, she hit from second base. We had to hit from home. She still did great. She killed it. Marsh hits 13 in front of me. No one has broken. No one, none of the men have broken double digits yet. And I'm like, oh, God, this guy's just crushing them. I get up there. Got three minutes. First minute and a half, I hit four or five. I'm popping them up. It's not looking good. I take a break. You get a 30-second timeout. I look over. And I see Brian Jordan staring at me. I see Brian Jordan watching me let my team down. And I said, no, fuck this shit. That ain't what Scott Cooper taught me. I ain't going down like this in front of Brian Jordan. And I don't know what happened, dude. I summoned a home run devil inside of my body. Okay? I summoned, the, I summoned Joe Boo from Major League, for those of you old enough to remember that movie. And he came out, dude. And I smashed like seven or eight dingers in a row. And on the last second, as they were counting down 3 2 1, I hit my 14th home run and I won my round. We lost to the fast lane, but I won my round against their best hitter, 14 to 13. And all of my teammates, all the Riz Show people, rushed the field. And guess who else rushed the field to give me a hug at home plate for hitting 14 dingers? You guessed it, Brian fucking Jordan, dude. 
and I pushed all of my teammates who have been loyal to me my whole life out of the way for my new best friend, Brian Jordan, who I've been mad at for 33 years. This happened 33 years ago, guys. Beef squashed. Brian Jordan's hugging me at home plate. He's telling me I did a great job. I don't have a great relationship with my dad. As far as I'm concerned, Brian Jordan is my new dad. Okay? So I don't really give a shit that we lost to the fast lane. That's the point of this story. I got a new dad. Okay? And my new dad is Brian fucking Jordan, dude. Two sports star of the 90s. Still an announcer for the Atlanta Braves. And still built like a brick shit house. He's a fine looking man. And a good looking wife. So add them to the list. People me and Tina would swing with. All right? That's kind of weird because he's my dad, but you know what? We'll get that all worked out. There's plenty of porn like that. So that's right. If you're my dad, Brian Jordan, and you're listening, you're a hot guy, I forgive you. If you guys ever want to swing with me and my girlfriend, we can talk about it. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> that's not weird, Brian. That's not weird, Dad. Dad, that's not weird. Don't make it weird, Dad. But thank you for calling in and asking me such a thoughtful question about the Home Run Derby. Yeah, I'm going to keep doing events. When shit like that happens, who cares who won? It was one of the greatest days of my life. I got a vindication story. I got a new dad out of the deal. Of course, I'm going to keep doing events like that. And Brian Jordan rules. I want to go on the record. Brian Jordan was a cool fucking dude. He owned his mistake. He was sweet and awesome. And I couldn't have asked for more. So if you don't like Brian Jordan, go fuck yourself. That's the point of this. And that being said, let's pause for a word from our sponsors. BrianJordan.com, everybody. BrianJordan.com. All right, we're back. I was looking at my computer screen. That was weird, but we're leaving it in. All right, we're leaving it in because I'm an honest man about how I conduct my podcast here on YouTube. You get to see the warts. You get to see what stuff doesn't work live. I challenge anyone else to do a live podcast as well as I do it because they're not. They probably are. I haven't really looked into it, but I'm trying really hard. So I hope you guys are enjoying it. I had fun with you guys. I had fun talking about all the stuff today, man. We covered it all from Deadpool to Wolverine to the, the hero of the Olympics, Bob, the cap catcher. We talked about the Rolling Stones, their influence on society. The concert I went to Branson, Missouri, and we took great, great message about three ways and how to go about them and communication and relationships and hell. Even got a new dad. Former MLB and NFL player Brian Jordan is my dad. That's pretty cool. So be sure to like and subscribe and share. And if you can, if you like the podcast, man, if you're listening to it in audio format, I know on Spotify and Megaphone, the video and the pod uh, run simultaneously. Leave a positive review if you like it. If you don't like it, what the fuck are you even listening to it for? No one's making you. It's free. Get off my ass. But if you like it, leave me a positive review. That helps get in front of more people and we can grow this thing and have fun. And then I can add even more bells and whistles because I'll have a better budget. That's how that works. So get on Spotify or Apple or wherever you listen to podcasts. Leave a positive review. Leave a comment later after the live chat disappears. If you're not watching this live, leave me a comment saying, hey, man, I like what you're doing. Thumbs up. All those things help. I know it's cliche to ask for all that. Like, Pound that like button. Hit subscribe. But I got to do it, man. It's part of the biz. Until next time, this has been the number two show. Never poop standing up. And always, write, always wipe front to back. I love you. Goodbye.